It's the most secret military base on the planet. You wanted Area 51, there it is. But no one's ever been this close, until now. This is the place to be at the right time. What is the government hiding inside? Is it secret weapons or extraterrestrial technology? We're taking it apart to figure out how it works. And what happens when people venture too far? We actually had to jump into the car to protect ourselves. Now, declassified information, inside accounts, revelations from former CIA pilots. I saw a flying saucer. And a groundbreaking look at the base with state-of-the-art equipment. We're getting images of Area 51 in high definition, the likes of which people have never seen before. This is case number 55101, Area 51 revealed. It's huge. October 2008. Pat Uskert is in the remote Nevada desert, 15 miles from Area 51. Is that them? It's definitely them. What are they doing? They're watching us. There's two guys in there. You want to see? You see, there are two guys actually in yes. the vehicle? Did their lights just turn on? Yes, it did. August 1955 the same Nevada desert. On a desolate dry lake bed, a plane unlike any seen before blasts into the air. This test of the U-2 spy plane ushers in the modern age of top secret aircraft. And the center of it all is Groom Lake, also known as Area 51. Chosen by the US government for its remote, almost impossible to reach location, no public road comes closer than 15 miles. The nearest town, Rachel, isn't established until 1973, and its population is rarely more than two to 300 people. For over 30 years, this isolated base in the middle of the desert is shrouded in mystery. Reports of strange lights hovering over the base become regular and radar captures impossibly fast objects moving in the vicinity. But secrecy remains. Then, in 1989, everything changes. The time where I entered the hangar, I witnessed a uh, recovered alien spacecraft that uh, the Department of Naval Intelligence in the United States was back engineering. Alleged US government physicist Bob Lazar goes public and claims he is reverse engineering alien spacecraft at Area 51. UFO sightings in the airspace above Groom Lake skyrocket. But the base remains closed off. An outer perimeter of at least 15 miles prevents anyone from seeing the installation. People who try to cross the perimeter are chased off, face arrest, and are warned that deadly force for trespassers is authorized. But now, using new high-definition cameras, there may be a way in. We're only a few miles away from the beating heart central of Area 51. It's almost a nation unto itself, with its own staff, uh, personnel, its own resources. Programs are actually ongoing today with, with new vehicles that we don't even know about yet. Today, the U.S. government has not officially acknowledged the existence of a base called Area 51, let alone admitted to extraterrestrial experimentation. The investigation now comes to the remote desert of Nevada for answers. Dr. Ted Ackworth will explore the official military history of the base. There has been a progression of the most advanced, the most clandestine vehicles developed here over the last 40 years. Bill Burns will look into the allegations of reverse engineering. 
The more we get into this story, the bigger and the deeper it gets. And Pat Uskert will attempt to see the base itself. Here's a chance to have a look into one of the most secret places in the world. Area 51 gets its name from 1950s era maps. They show the Nevada test site complex divided into a grid with a different number assigned for each separate quadrant. The land around Groom Lake just happens to be assigned the number 51. With little to no important details from these historical records, only a select number of people have gotten closer to the truth about what's happening inside. I'm about to meet with Peter Merlin. He's an aeronautical historian and something of an expert on Area 51. Peter Merlin is a member of the Nevada Test Site Historical Foundation. He has interviewed dozens of Area 51 employees and has studied some of the top secret bases declassified documents and formerly illegal satellite images. Now the base was first opened around 1955, is that right? It was established in 1955 by the Central Intelligence Agency. The U-2 spy plan was highly classified and they needed a place to test it outside of the public eye. Engineers initially choose Groom Lake, an enormous dry lake bed, because of the possibility for a 20,000 foot natural runway. But when it becomes apparent the U-2 would be vulnerable to Soviet missile attack, the U.S. military begins ramping up other secret projects. Well, the base of Groom Lake just wasn't ready for that. Uh, didn't have the facilities, the infrastructure, or the runway. So they built it up, and that's how it became a full-scale Air Force base that we know today. By the 1960s, the base becomes ground zero for the development and testing of many top-secret military aircraft. The RB-69A, the F-117, and the B-2. What do you think they're working on in Area 51 now? We're going to probably see a lot more testing of unmanned vehicles now because there's been a big push in the Air Force uh, in that direction. But seeing a test in this highly restricted area is almost unheard of. Yet this is precisely what Pat is about to attempt. Pat is meeting with Mark Farmer, an aerial combat cameraman and Area 51 expert. He is taking Pat to view an undisclosed flight path that few have ever been to. We're about 20 miles to the north of Area 51. This whole place is contaminated with plutonium. Uh, they have done a weapons dispersal test where they blew up a nuclear weapon. So are we in a plutonium-enriched area right now? There's plutonium around. <laughs> OK, great. According to Farmer, many years have passed since the last weapons test. But this area has become a prime location for something else, observing flight tests. Hey, I hear something right now. Sounds like we got something coming in. In the distance, an F-15 moves through the skies over Area 51. Not long after, it's joined by another. The military may have been a 